In last week's video, we visited not just one, but two great British anchorages, which we not only shared with you here, but of course, we also shared them with you all to our free anchorages guide, which has all the wonderful destinations that we've dropped the hook in and momentarily called our home. And in today's episode, we drop the hook in another remarkable anchorage, surrounded by the majesty of the fine British countryside, where our explorations then lead us to yet another jewel in the crown of England's southwest coastline. After a relaxing sail in the warm summer sun, we find ourselves here, dropping Kadoa's hook in another completely empty anchorage, a place called Talland Bay. Now, seeing as we had arrived at low tide and the water looked amazing, there really was only one thing for it. So you can see there, this is actually a female brown crab. You can tell, you can tell here by the big uh, oval chest plate that she's got here. The flap, uh, a male would be long and slim, but she's a nice size. I would much rather have a male crab, really. There's a lot more meat in a male crab. The claws are much bigger, um, but this can still make a beautiful crab linguine, nonetheless. Well, considering the visibility wasn't exactly amazing down there. It was quite an underwater world to be seen. The biggest wrasse, that's kind of like, I guess a cousin of grouper, I believe. That's kind of like the English grouper. Um, but the wrasse, there were some humongous ones and some really amazing colored, like bright orange with big white spots. And they were hiding in caves and swimming out all over the place. There was a lot of wrasse. Um, I only saw one lobster, three brown crabs, three, three, three brown crabs. Um, and two of them just, just dive too far into their cave. I couldn't get them out. And I don't like to fight too hard with them because then you risk injuring them and you don't, 
you don't know whether you can keep them at that point, so you really, you really don't want to harm them. Um, but if I can prise the crab, if I can get the hook behind the crab and just make it walk out of the, the cave or the hole sideways and come out into the open and grab it, then I will. But more often than not, they sort of bow down and show you their, their crown and they use that as a shield and it makes it really difficult to get them out. And like I said, I just, I don't like to have a real scrap with them because I don't want to injure something unnecessarily if I can't keep it. Sorry? That camera must mean you've got some dinner. Uh, crab link weenie? Yes. Yes. With dinner now secured for the crew, it was time to make sure conditions aboard the good ship Kadoa were comfortable for everyone to enjoy relaxing here. This swell bridle is becoming a bit of a thing now, but we've got the wind just coming over the headland over there, and the swell again is just wrapping round and so we were starting to have that 45 degree rolling side to side. We're just about to take Hank to shore and have a little explore, take you guys with us. But before we did, I just thought I'd set the swell bridle up again. If anyone's watching this video and you haven't seen the video where I talk about the swell bridle, it's actually this video here, you go check it out. About halfway through, I actually talk you through how we rig it up, so I don't want to repeat myself for those of you that have already seen it. But uh, just know that it's doing its job once again. The swell is coming into the anchorage around this peninsula, and because we're the only boat here, it is beautiful, it's comfortable. Love it. Having another one of those moments as the sun goes down we're in this beautiful anchorage gone on another amazing coastal walk so hank can obviously stretch his legs get rid of the last of his energy do his business and we're in another beautiful spot we're the only boat anchored here again and i know that's starting to sound like a scratch record but it's true and if it wasn't for the fact that we we're using a swell bridle uh, i'll be honest with you this anchorage would be really uncomfortable but with the wind coming over the headland, rigging up the swell bider was meant just pointing the bow into the swell and it's perfectly comfortable. And what a delight. Under the water is amazing. And I'm sure if you had a couple of days of offshore wind to clear up that visibility, those of you that like snorkeling or diving or hunter gathering, foraging, or just admiring the wildlife, it's amazing under the water. There's so much interesting topography. There's a big reef on boat that runs around both sides and cuts almost right across the beach. And then there's all these boulders that dot out and just so much interesting structure under the water. Lovely countryside, animals, couple of cafes. What a lovely place to stop. It's very difficult to wake up somewhere like this and be in anything other than a great mood. We decided that this morning we would explore the westward coastal path for Hank's first walk of the day after we were tipped off by some fellow cruisers for what awaited us if we ventured just a little further on our explorations by foot. As always, lest we forget. Look at that 
favourite times of the year again. <laughs> Not just because the kids are about to go back to school, but because it's very nearly apple and blackberry crumble season. <laughs> That's the best. Mm. It wasn't long before what was already a stunning walk culminated in the most quintessential Cornish coastal fishing village, which had a rich and colourful history to learn about, although not strictly an anchorage. This place was too picture perfect to not head over in Kadoa, to proudly sit alongside all the other magnificent destinations on Kadoa.com. <laughs>